Ladies and gentlemen, hello, welcome along once again to uh, that there, LandPowerTV.com. So as you can tell, if we face forward, we are out to have a look at this beat, a Mercedes-Benz Unimog, and joining me, well, we've got a trio of delinquents, is obviously myself, James Rickard from Land Power TV. We've got Mr. Simon Henley here, as you've seen before, from Farm Machinery Journal. And we've got this little fella here, Mr. Mark Hatton from the Farming Forum. <laughs> so we're all here today. In fact, it's actually down to Mark for uh, inviting us out to have a look at this uh, this beast. Um, yeah, what model are we looking at? What have we got? So it's the U530, which is circa 300 horsepower. Mercedes engine, six, six cylinder Mercedes engine. Eight forward, six reverse gears. Also got a hydrostatic transmission option on it. There's also a low range, which splits the gears effectively. Right. This is actually the range topper as well, I think, isn't it? Yes, the I U530. Yeah. This is the most powerful of uh, of these models. At, at the, well, at this at this time, because this is not this is the previous no, so think, generation, yeah, isn't it? I moment, think it's important this, to yeah. know that this is it's, it's not the latest. No, it's is not it? the latest incarnation. Which, yeah. Which uh, they are in the country, but this is a three-year-old machine, I believe. But well, hopefully, at some point, we'll get a look at the. Next the latest one. one, the next one, next yes. time. But for now, this is here to whet our appetite. It is, yes. Just and just, just give us a flavour of what the Unimog's all about. Because of what it will do. I mean, there's quite a few people out there, you know, in the world of ag. Obviously, they're big in the utility sector, but even in the world of ag, there's quite a few people that do use them. So, ag, they are predominantly used for for haulage, and it, it and they they're quite open to the fact that um, they're never going to replace a tractor. Yeah. It's not a haul. It's not a tillage machine. It'll never replace a 300 horsepower ploughing tractor. But the, the various farmers are using it for, for varying different applications. Um, you know, using them to, to, to run bowsers about for, for filling sprayers up. That's it, it'd be a great support vehicle, oh, wouldn't it? Brilliant machine. You know, keep the sprayer in the field. Yeah. Or the drill in the field. Yeah. Or whatever. And bring the, well, the product to the drill or the sprayer. And high abs are, are often fitted to these so they can use them as a... You know, lifting, loading, moving bags of seed about. Um, well, they're good for things like spreader applications, aren't they? Yeah. You know, road salters and yeah. fertilizer spinners and stuff, and you can yeah. carry the top up. You can put front mounted stuff on them. You can put hedge, hedge cutters, cutters on and all the sorts on the front. Mowers, blowers, sweepers. I mean, they're pretty versatile machines. Very versatile machine. The perspective of I've had to putting things on it, I mean, I've not actually counted, but there must be six or eight banks of hydraulics. Right. At least. More spills you can shake a stick yeah. out there. It's got, I noticed when you walk around it with the thing we were saying earlier, it's, it's got more radiator packs on it than you'd find in a five bedroom <laughs> semi detached house. Well, I see, I mean, it's, we've it's, just passed a pair of spills there. There's another pair here, and that's the front. Like Simon was saying, coolers. There's a radiator, radiator there. Radiator there, radiator back There's here. another one there. What have you got around here? There's another, another one another there. Another one there. <laughs> and another one under here. And then, like we're saying, Spill spills and more spills. And much of the, the radiators are for the, the hydraulic, yeah. for the hydrostatic transmission. So, back end here, uh, real linkage uh, and pickup hitch. Is that a, a MOG built thing or who builds I what? I believe they're supplied by um, South Cave tractors, fit all the linkages to uh, the Unimogs that come into the UK. Right. And one thing we did is we've just pulled into this field this morning is put full lock on it and see how far we can go before things start touching. And if we look down here, that's getting pretty close down there, isn't it? Yeah. But you've got, go on, you've got, to be fair, you've got one hell of an angle on that, you know. Yeah, like, yeah and it's tight. Uh, yeah. 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 It's, you yeah. wouldn't want to go anymore. No. But it's just one of those things you've got to be sort of aware of it. Vigilant, yeah, yeah, is the right yeah. word. Ooh, vigilant, vigilant. Yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. Right, I think that's enough chit chat and a, a little bit of a wander around. But what we're going to do next, I think, yeah, we'll just have a bash on and see yeah. what we can find. That's all we can do. That's what we did best. Let's just get on with it. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> right, boys and girls, so I'm in the seat now. What could possibly go wrong? Like I say, it's been a while since I've driven the Unimog. In fact, the last one I've driven was my mate Rob's, and uh, that that one's knocking on a bit. So it wasn't as fancy or as plush as this one. So we'll see what happens. Right. So right to set off, what's what's so, the crack yeah, then? So foot on brake, 
Full time brew, yeah. You select, you got to turn the turn, so turn the dial to draw to D. To D, yeah. You in drive, yep, yeah. and then air brake off, and brake off. Air brake off, there we go. And, and I see it goes straight to second. Yes. Right. So just and then foot off brake, bit, bit of throttle, and away we should go. That's it. So as soon as you give it a bit of throttle, it so it will change it, up. It, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Just like that. So we're in fully auto at the moment. And it is, it's not like a true automatic, it is a robotized manual box basically. So it's doing all the shifting and the clutching for you. That's the about the size of it, is it? Yep. Right. So you hear that very just like that. Well that's easy enough, isn't it? Pretty much. Right, we're done lads. <laughs> and then you can override this, can't you? Point towards you. Oh towards, towards me. Yeah. So if you knock it down away, that's down a cog. And then towards me, that's up a cog. So we've got a flappy paddle gearbox. <laughs> you can also, you see on the end of the lever there's a push button, so you can put it into manual completely. Oh, completely, right. So you shift, so you shift every... So you can do a temporary override or yeah. like a full on, yeah, yeah. full on manual. So how do you adjust this steering wheel for a start? Because yeah. it's a long way away. You don't. You do, it's fixed. Yeah, because it's, cause this has got the side changer option. Yeah. So that's it, that's... Yeah, yeah. Right. Can I slam my seat forward then? But what were your legs? I've only got little legs, it's all in the body. It's a big body, all right. <laughs> Shut up. So if we go manual now, so if I pop this button in here... Yeah, it should change, or it should... Oh, M. M, M for there manual, you there you go, you've got to press it properly. So... And I notice it does all the throttle work for you when it's changing. Yeah. It literally, you know, on the downshift then, like this, it gives you a blitter flip a throttle as you would if you were changing down and what do you reckon to the steering? No, initially I thought it was a bit heavy but now I've got used to it it's all right yeah but there is an option on the newer ones have got a softer steering right well yeah it's a bit of a two-handed job steering isn't it, it is a little bit yeah got to admit it's not bad though no no I mean my old Navara is probably about as heavy as this <laughs> I mean that's got steering connected by an elastic band so that's nothing to go by. I do like the sex. It's got a good whistle, hasn't it? <laughs>